me, love me, love me, say you do. Ding, 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 ding. Let me fly away with you. Ding, 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 ding. For my love is like the wind. Ding, 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 ding. And wild is the wind. Oh, wild is the wind. You touch me. Ding, 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 I hear the sound of mandolins. You kiss me, dang, 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 with your kiss, my life begins. Oh, your spring to me. All frogs to me. Don't you know your frog itself? Hi, and welcome to the CM Kozumin Frog Extravaganza. All right, everyone, we are back. This is part four of the never ending frog diversity total survey video by cm kozaman the last we left off we had finished studying the poison arrow frogs in the big big main group called hyloidea which contains the tree frogs and all their associated relatives and this also includes toads and all sorts of other things and we were on our way to study proper tree frogs and their relatives but before that let's do a little bit of recap now this is an enormous presentation reviewing all almost all genera of frogs in the world and every family and like main group of frog in the current world as you can see it is over 600 pages long and we were at the 271st page before beginning though let us go back to our pointers number one please consider watching these videos in order and at twice or 1.75 times the speed makes me sound like a cooler person number two please consider supporting me on patreon.com the link is in the video description and in the pinned comment and also please consider supporting Ater Prometheum for their contribution to the charming introduction part of these epoch defining videos i mean at least for me they're the biggest narrative undertaking i have worked on so far and it's all for free all for you just for you you know so maybe this channel is not monetized so consider paying back the generosity by donating to me on patreon.com if you are already a donator shoot this video over to some friends and maybe heck they can donate instead of you you know you make the community grow one weird person at at the time okay so where were we where were we okay so the last we left off we had just reached the frontier of the highly dire family now this group it's an enormous group i mean it may be split into further subfamilies and whatever it's so freaking big it's true tree frogs and their relatives and you can see now this is a cladistic classification so instead of like the classic class order family blah 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 we just have frogs anura and they're divided into three main branches and this branch is neobatrachia which contains basically almost all modern frogs and in this big branch there is a big group called the hyloidea note that it's not it's different from hylidae because oid imagine like human and humanoid that's the difference so it's the group of things that are kind of like hylids but 
also a whole lot of other things besides so that's how the language works at least and within this group there's an earlier subclade called Kofamantinae represented here by Aplastodiscus calipigus as you can see it's a pretty vanilla looking tree frog like somewhat tropical looking and I really like this kind of 1950s car flanges on the back of these legs um, but still a unique and interesting frog on its own under this group now this group contains like the more primitive tree frog like things also in this group is the genus boana represented here by boana picturata the amazingly patterned proto tree frog and also you got this guy boker mano hyla hylax uh, with its amazingly beautiful blue tiger striped legs i mean this creature just is begging for a watercolor painting to be done and you know, one of my tricks of the trade is whenever I'm like painting surreal creatures, I always take photos of real life animals like this one and use the dropper tool to sample these colors because these colors and this color harmony you don't get anywhere else. The rea reality is truly the best ma master. Also in this group you got the goldily patterned Hyloskirtus genus represented here by Hyloskirtus tigrinus, the tigery frog kind of thing. But there are also many species of Hyloskirtus. Some of them are not as gaudily colored, but they all have some sort of like amazing pattern and skin game going on. You know, when I look at these games like Prehistoric Kingdom or the Jurassic Park Zoo games, all these animals have weird skins. And, you know, some people say, ah, come on, that's too much. But actually, no, nature is far more creative. And just look at all these skin patterns, the subtle orange. And it blends into this greenish black, but then it turns brown and the eye is also dark. These red spots, these tiger stripes. Oh my God. I mean, these are just perfect inspiration. Even if you have no interest in frog evolution and frog, frog cladistics, you know, as an artist, all these animals should interest you immediately and intensely. Oh my God. Who left the Wi-Fi on? Okay, moving on, moving on. In the Copomantinae subgroup, you have also these frogs, uh, the big genus Mayer Co. Hyla. And, you know, I'm really skipping over these things, but each genus has like dozens and maybe even hundreds of species. So they're actually extremely diverse. And we really are doing a speed run here. And even that is taking episodes and hours. Anyways, then you got this amazing group, uh, duo picture taken in South America. On the left hand side, you have Boana Siblesi. We have we saw Boana here. It's a, a familiar genus already. But here you got Nezo, Nezoro Hyla, which is a strange different group. And as you can see, the pupils of this animal are pure pitch black. So it looks like a gray alien. And note how they like all the all frogs are very conservative body plans i mean it's very rarely you see something that's truly out of the box but that subtle variety makes them all the more interesting like imagine imagine if humans had so many different subspecies and species or like relatives heck imagine if like there were hundreds of different species of human like animals running around but this just looks like a gray alien encounter i mean just look at these soulless soulless eyes maybe nobody is going to believe this frog when it says I saw a dark-eyed man of the forest. And we've been studying this in... Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot the full screen. Anyways, moving on. Then you have the Dandropsophinae subgroup, which contains this famous and extremely variable genus. Once again, Dandropsohopus. It looks like kind of like a smaller, smoother jelly bean type of colorful tree frog. And as you must be expecting by now there are hundreds of species with amazing patterns and just you could spend your whole day just studying these guys i mean just look at this guy look at this customer i also like that for every goldy species there are like several of these gray weird species and i bet i bet these also hybridize in nature so that's also a conundrum of classification right there in this group you also have this very very special frog xenohyla truncata now you might ask, what's so special about this mother? And the answer is, this guy is one of the few, perhaps the only, herbivorous frog ever recorded as an adult. Of course, as, as tadpoles, tadpoles, many frogs eat plant matter, but this guy, as an adult, has a 
proclivity to eat berries, which it does. And maybe because of its plant-based diet, its body is kind of longer, its limbs are kind of comparatively smaller. It looks like a weird little chicken man tree creature kind of thing. And I just imagine like what if the evolution of this thing uh, continued and you now have like gigantic plant eating sloth frogs or like squirrel frogs and all those interesting. And the tadpoles of this frog are also something to behold. I mean, they look like this like imagine you do you ever have dreams of aquarium shops? Please comment if you do, because I have them. As a kid, I used to go to a fucking cram school. And the cram school was right next to this kind of storage aquarium shop where some unscrupulous people used to store all the imported illegal salt seawater fish and tropical fish they were bringing into the country. This was a very illegal place, but I just saw the aquariums inside. And one day I walked in, you know, I skipped the fucking cram school. And inside, it was full of these like... I mean, I had never seen this fish outside of a documentary. And I mean, in this day and age, they seem pretty familiar. Like in some shopping malls, you can see them like lionfish and stuff like that. But to me, they were really fascinating. And so because of that formative event, I still keep dreaming of having dreams of these like weird Cronenbergian aquarium shops where I see the most plausible looking but strange fish. And this tadpole is straight out of those dreams. It looks like a weird catfish from uh, Vietnam that nobody has heard about look at this it's just like leaf shaped with those stripes and it's got a little finial tail I mean this is just lovely and then the face is as wide as the tail is tall what's going on in here once again I mean it, I, there are some like pretty weird tadpoles out there but this is one of those that I wish I could raise as like a pure fish kind of thing Anyway, then you have the Pseudinae subgroup represented here by Scartyla goinorum. These are like more square-faced frogs and not much is known about them except that they live in South America and they just hang around and are cool. And I also really like these like or quote-unquote ordinary color patterns. If one you once you think about it, there's nothing ordinary about them. There's this like discrete t red tint to the eye, the green mouth, the pale belly, off just an artistic, perfect color palette. And then you got this like skinnier group, uh, frog in this group, Lys Lysapus. Now these are interesting because these guys start out, like this whole clade is basically a group of tree frogs that are turning into pond frogs. And as you study more and more species, they lose their like sucker tipped feet. So this guy, for, as, as you can see, has webbed feet and has no suckers. And it's not related to true water frogs at all. So it's like a case of convergent evolution. And when you study patterns in frog evolution, the more it seems that time and time again, these different frogs crawl out of basically a reservoir space in the jungle or in the vast forests of the world and then evolved into forms which we now call toads or water frogs or tree frogs. But actually most of these groups are unrelated. If you watch the previous episodes, you see cases of this happening with toads, for example. Anyways, this is Lysapsus caraya, but this group also gets really weird because they also have this kind of weird growth thing going on. Now, as you remember from these weird tadpoles, like this group already has something weird going on with their tadpoles. Now, this guy has this enormous chonkin fongin tadpoles, but as they grow, the tadpoles act actually shrink. And it becomes like some weird thing that's completely indistinguishable from an ordinary pond frog. But this is actually the paradox frog, the Pseudis paradoxa frog. And like you would never know, but this is actually a tree frog relative that has done some weird metabolic in-game cheat code script kind of thing. So they start out as enormous tadpoles and shrink and become these like boring water frog type of things. But... If you only knew the things they had seen. Just look. While I take a sip of CM Kozaman coffee. What is your... If you are a long time viewer, what's your favorite CM Kozaman moment? Comment in the comment section and let's keep this algorithm kicking. Okay, here are more pictures of Pseudis Paradoxa, the paradox frog. 
they used to think this was like a relative of the like European or Asian water frogs. They so they used to call it Rana paradoxa, but now we know it's completely different thing. In fact, it was placed in Ranidae, Leptodactylidae, Hylidae, as well as their own family, because they have a highly derived body plan. And recently, somebody studied these guys' genes and looks like they're part of the tree frog group. But you know, as with all herpetology classification stuff come back in five years and probably it will be something else anyways moving on moving on then you got the subgroup known as synaxinae which contains like these like leafy sharp low rider frogs with like protruding noses i think they're really aesthetic and beautiful and you know anything camouflaged as a leaf is a killer design in my book so here you have synax sugiliatus sugoi and then you got another relative, Synax fuscovarius, which doesn't have the weird camouflaging fringes, but it still has this like long, no long nosed kind of like electronic warfare combat aircraft look. And it it, it combines this kind of old frog kind of look with these like really weird and beautiful tree frog like suckers. So it's a beautiful, beautiful creature. And then you got the little group of tree frogs. Like th there are many, many groups of tree frogs and other frogs like this basically one thing frogs like doing is like whenever they evolve into a group they also have like several out groups of extremely species rich tiny representatives the same thing happens with toads with poison frogs with everything and it's just it's just confusing here is acris crepitans the creep of the acrisinae subgroup and if you look closely these are moss and here i think is a left behind shedding left by a small spider so these guys inhabit a completely tiny and strange world in the jungle then you move on to the proper tree frog clade so you got hyloidea tree frog like things hylidae proper tree frogs hylinae proper proper tree frogs represented here by atlante hyla spinipolex i think this is an american species so it's like a regular brown tree frog and in in many parts of the u.s especially in the south you can hear these guys and they're just beautiful you also have like some more uh, strangely colored varieties such as bromelio hyla melanea melanena which i believe is a mexican or subtropical american species and the tadpoles look like this so I, this entire clade has something with tadpoles it looks like a strange lancet type of fish and then you got more like proper quote-unquote tree frogs which you and i recognize as tree frogs because they are like the most northernmost uh, occurring versions of this clade dryophytes and their sony and then uh, duelo manohyla salvavida once again i think a south american species like they appear regular but then you got these varieties which completely do Unthink of unthinkable things with their eye color with their color these are an extremely variable clade by the way i mean i don't think even birds have this much variety when it comes to eye color and patterns and stuff i mean the guys don't have many body plans but they certainly have a lot of colors going on and then in this group you got ec ecnomi hyla milaria which is like a fringed kind of variety but it's a proper proper tree frog here you have Echnomio hyla raborum looks archaic but no actually it's a proper 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 tree frog really beautiful design by the way and this guy actually has a sort of flying ability you know like you you might be reading about flying frogs but there are actually many different frogs that have independently evolved this heck if you watched the previous episode there was even like a toad that had evolved this kind of really gnarly rubber tire kind of webbing beneath between its fingers and it was kind of like a sticky gliding toad so this is like a flying proper tree frog kind of thing ecnomio hyla raborum with the flying ability by the way out of all the frogs you've seen so far which one is your spirit animal like in this video mine were the tadpoles you saw for that beautiful zebra stripe thing and then you got some like really cool Echnomio hyla species such as Echnomio hyla phantasmagoria which sounds like a Italian Z movie featuring some monsters but no actually it's a frog and it's just a beautiful frog 
and you got Eknomoya Haila, Sukia, which is like full on, like, you know, sniper rifle operator camouflaged. Like, I'm talking about Metal Gear Solid, Solid Snake levels of coolness shit right here. Look at, like, the fringes on the leg and how they blend in with the contours of the animal, how the hands are ridiculously large. I mean, I always think about the sci fi universe in which there are, like, these genetically modified human snipers with built-in blow pipes in their mouths but they look like <laughs> anyways that's just the that's just the kid and me fantasizing but if you like to draw these like frog mimicking sniper humanoids be my guest i'll share them on my youtube channel if you draw them so there and then in this group, you got everybody's favorite in the old world, Hyla Arborea. These are the common tree frogs. When I go went to high school, these guys were actually like, you could see them hopping about in the grass in spring. And then in the time it took me to move from elementary school, school to high school, they just disappeared. Because I think that whole area was being developed. It was a suburban place. But then these factories and shit moved in. And then, unfortunately, these frogs became locally extinct. You can still see them around, but you have to go to, like, these rivers and streams. And it's just one loss. I mean, you used to have these in urban Istanbul, but no more. And very sad. And they had this kind of, like, really, like, kind of song. I can't do it justice. It sounded like... I can't do it. But they were, like, they could be in the same room with you i know that because i caught them and you know kept them in my bedroom but you could not tell where the sound was coming from beautiful animals and and just so sad please press f for hilo arborea tree frogs in suburban istanbul and also if you have other memories with local amphibian extinctions please share them in the comments below Okay, moving on. In this group, you got Istmohyla rivularis, which is another long-bodied, round-faced, little-known form. They don't have these long toes. They have short toes. Interesting. Then you got Plectrohyla teucestes, which is like more meaty, fleshy, and it almost has a toad-like uh, face, I, I, I could say. So there, you know. I mean, evolution doesn't mess around, and it really is like... Life is more diverse than one person can wrap their head around. It's just humbling. Then you got these tree frogs that are like really tiny and they lost some of their like tree frog genus. And this is the big, big genus Pseudacris. There are many, many species of these guys. Then you got Ticohila salvadorensis, a South American form. Like little known, once again, very smooth, but also short-toed, weird critter. Then you got Tycohylo macrotympanum known for its perhaps named after its big eardrums but the diversity is just never ending and there are people who devote their entire lives to studying these animals by the way if you're in like high school you want to choose a college career if you if, th if this stuff turns you on if you find this interesting please consider a career in zoology or herpetology you know you could be and uh, maybe you won't make as much money but you'll have a very satisfying life and also if you ever made like a big life decision like education a career something after watching my videos please let me know i i feel like i i i get these letters sometimes people say you know i chose i mean i don't know i chose to study insects after watching your videos and i i don't i'm not kidding i tear up it's very touching and emotional for me so there pticohila macro tympanum and then you got some very critically endangered group uh, genera such as quilt T. Kohaila, which is critically endangered. I think it's found in parts of South America. They live in the moons of Iago, I think, but they're very endangered, so so there. Then you got the big genus, Sark Sarkohyla, which has many, many species, and they're very small, but chunky and gubin looking. Look at this. Oi, wouldn't you like to pet this guy? I know I would. Gubin! And then you also have Similiska, another genus, which is, what can I say? They're just tree frogs, and they're awesome. They kind of stand apart with their big eardrums. But, you know, if, I, if someone brought this guy over to me on a plate with maybe this guy, how would we see their differences? This guy has, like, a, a more ingressed head, 
longer hind digits maybe if you look at this guy hmm, I don't know I don't know it's all confusing these days and then you got this enormously diverse genera such as Tlacohyla named after Tlaloc Tl or uh, probably named after an Aztec god but I might be wrong and there are many species and only experts can tell them apart so there and then you got the weirdest tree frogs of them all. I mean, just look at this face. I'm just going to leave it on for a bit so you can just drink it in. It looks like Sid the Sloth from Ice Age, doesn't it? But no, actually, it's Triprion Petastus. Triprion Petasatus with its shovel like beak. And these guys are just all business all the time. And like when I was going genus by genus studying all the frogs when these guys came up i was like there you know i i screamed i said oh my god look at them i mean what does this spatula nose do is it like uh, something to stop snakes from eating them i don't know or maybe a visual kin recognition I mean, just look at this guy just look at this guy i'll play a game right now screenshot this image okay I'm waiting, do it, and then send a picture of this guy to your love interest and then ask them what they think it is. And then you can start a conversation and maybe that conversation can lead somewhere like these guys. You could be like them. Look at their spatulate. I mean, they look like strange speculative evolution creatures, don't they? unbelievable and note how the eyes kind of poke out they're just off this is like the froggiest frog ever and they're part of the proper tree frog clade for some reason and in this group you also have another genus i think this must go in a separate family but it's like the strange spiky headed monkey frog and now this guy really knocks it out of the ballpark to begin with its face is flat like a human's or a monkey's its eyes face forward its skull has these spines and these are not fleshy spines there's are like those are like s bony spines and its body has a strange three color chocolate camouflage and basically these if you break the skin here these can somehow envenomate uh, the predators who are trying to eat them so they're almost certainly an anti-predator defense probably against small snakes so just unbelievable and I don't know who classified this guy in the same genus as this guy, but I think they must be like separate genera or even a separate family. Actually, you do have a separate family dedicated to, to these like even stranger helmet headed frogs. But for some reason, I checked and double checked and double triple checked. And this Triprion frog and that Triprion frog, somehow they're listed under Hylinae, proper tree frogs. Whereas these guys, the Nictimantis frogs, are classified under a separate helmet-headed group called uh, Lofio Hylinae, and I just don't know why that is. Maybe I made a mistake, so if you know something about these guys, correct me. But these guys are also super weird. They have these like elongated noses, these unnecessarily big eyes, these bony faces. Nictimantes, also known as Asparasphenodon brunoi, and to make things more complicated, this genus also has a monkey-faced flat-headed variety. Here shown, it is Nictimantis rugiceps. And then you got many, many species of these Nictimantis. Like you got these leopard-spotted red-eyed versions. Once again, with the long bony head, the duck-like bill. It's just unbelievable. Nictimantis pomba. Also Nictimantis arapapa. And look at these like spiny tail and protuberances. It looks like a naked, naked witch's familiar. And then you got Coritomantis greeningi, which has also has these like poison spikes in, in its head. And it was like once heralded as the first known venomous frogs. Because if you know anything about like, uh, there's this like pedantic distinction. If an animal is poisonous, its body has poison. But if an animal is venomous, it has a means of injecting that venom. Technically, they say these frogs have a way of injecting that venom with these like spiny bone things on their heads. 
same story with these guys actually and i still don't know why they're not classified together i mean maybe i'm making a mistake but i really check different sources and in this group you have also the red-faced monkey frog dryadarsis inframaculata just a cool cool customer and just look at this awesome pattern and look how the red of the eyes is echoed in the back with this like beautiful reddish orange gradation it's just unbelievable then in this group you also have itapo tihaila which is a like fancy tree frog with like different colored discs under its toes and these twin vocal sacs but when it's sleeping it turns white and it becomes like a ghost so how interesting and then you got this guy osteocephalus planiceps flat-headed bony-headed tree frog with enormous eyes in this photo by diego a gomez so thanks for the photograph and you got osteocephalus taurinus which is like a more serious looking customer i like the kind of improperly shade shaded yellow spots on the eyes and then you got osteopilus not osteocephalus but osteopilus another genus known for its extremely long feet must be a very very proficient jumper osteopilus vastus and then for some reason maybe no reason in this group you got this like little smooth bambi little smooth bambi group known as Phyllodites melanomistax. It's a little like completely counterintuitive form. Unlike these larger forms, it's smooth and like a Bambi basically. And it breeds in wet, wet Bormeliad ponds. Here's another representative. And then in this group, you also have Tepui Hyla, which is like a very rare South American frog. The name Tepui, I'm just, this is beautiful. It looks like almost like a pterosaur. I can't get enough of these beautiful fringed long-legged camouflaged skin pattern frogs these guys live in tepuis tepuis are these like floating plateaus that rise above the south american jungle at certain points and they're like the original uh, lost worlds like the conditions on these places have remained unchanged for millions of years or so, so that the creatures who live here like tepu hyla here are extremely rare and usually endangered people used to think dinosaurs lived here too but uh -uh, no such luck unfortunately then in this group you also have trichocephalus trachycephalus once again the cross eye thing is like the game is really strong in here look at it just beautiful and then here's a more proper photograph of a like more smoother pattern form trachycephalus Resinificatrix. I think these guys also occur in the pet trade sometimes. They're just really beautiful with this bluish green color. Beautiful, beautiful frogs. And then in this group, you got the Pelodryadinae subgroup, the Australian tree frogs. To make things more complicated, there are also Aussie versions of these guys, represented here by Litoria cyrillea. This is a very common, like, fat, big, chunky tree frog. I was actually lucky enough to see them in Australia when I visited in 2015. They are common in the pet trade and people breed them and like they really fatten them up. They got weird colors and in fact they are like a really popular pet uh, to keep. So if you want to raise like amphibians responsibly, maybe you could choose this species because they are ethically raised. You know, they don't catch them from nature. They are captive bred. And then in this group you got also like remember what I told about lots of ordinary looking species accompanying charismatic species so you got these like more drab colored litoria species represented here by litoria evingi litoria chloris i dropped the eye ah uh, australia is a wonderful wonderful land i come from a land down under there are many 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 species of these litoria frogs and all the same patterns echo in them. They're just beautiful. And then you got the waxy frogs, Nyctemistes. Another species, Nyctemistes montanus. Really, really beautiful once again. And then you got the strange tree frog like tree. No, sorry. You got the strange pond frog like tree frogs, which have in independently evolved a kind of 
pond frog like shape once again and you you see it, it if it doesn't make your head spin i don't know probably you're not interested but ranoidea raniformis the common frog like common frog like frog of the tree frog radiation in australia and then you got the famous uh, red eye tree frog group which which are the like extremely charismatic almost monkey like tree frogs with these big eyes bright colors and long long legs these are like these frogs always appear i think them and an old lizards have a monopoly on high school biology textbooks it's either one or the other the philomedusinae group represented here by agalichnis lemur and agalichnis calidrias the famous red-eyed tree frog and uh, there are many species of these guys. Agalichnis spurelli. This guy is also a glider. And it's got the flying ability. One more time. It's cropping up in unrelated forms and lineages. And then you got the genus Calimedusa. Which is kind of like even longer legged. And like, you got to really hand it to frog anatomy. Like their hands. Okay. But their legs have an extra joint. That's separate from the metacarpals. So it's like an extra limb thing. This evolved from the foot bones, but it's like so long and distinct. It's just wow. I mean, what are these guys just walk about on trees like little monkeys? They're really cute. You got Chris Cruzio Hyla, another related species with more crass, fleshier features. And then you got Hylomantis, which is notable for its like toad like granulated skin. You know, evolution leaves no experiment untried you got phasma hyla another big big genus like each genus i mentioned here has like dozens if not hundreds of species so we're really speed running here but this guy's phasma hyla guttata they're kind of smaller bodied and bigger headed and just look at the eyes imagine having your eyes wider than your thighs how bizarre and then you got phrenomedusa another very common group these guys also have the 1950s car thing going on in their heels. Really cool feature. Really cool design aesthetic. And then you got the waxy monkey frogs represented here by Philomedusa Sawagi. Now it's meme time, everyone. Where is this guy walking to? Wrong answers only. It really looks like a little monkey, a little man with purpose, aim, and intent. And it looks like it looks like it's going to the bank to make a cash withdrawal. Just drink it in while I drink some coffee. Oh, and this is another picture. These guys look like this when they're sitting down. They got this waxy secretion which they rub about on their bodies from head to toe. And it basically protects them from the desiccating effects of the sun. So they they're like meditating monks i think litoria species also have some features like this but i'm not so sure then you got pithecopus gonzanagi another big genus pithecopus means monkey frog and i really like this like kinky kinky little finger thing they got going on it's exactly they're moving exactly like people would move even though their bones and anatomy are like far far different just be i mean think about it these are animals alive on earth today how lucky we are to have them and then ah uh, that that finishes it with actually the big big hylidae family like right after them there's a smaller group called hylodidae not hylidae hylodidae and these are usually known as giant neotropical torrent frogs and they're basically very little known they live in the southern hemisphere and they live in fast flowing rivers and streams so here's one example crossodactylus dantii and hylodes pipilans we're just going to sp speed round with these guys because not much is known about them other than the fact that they exist M mega elosia goeldi a uh, more tree frog like customer and uh, the best thing about these guys is that their tadpoles are like weird chunky and wacky just look at these guys and they turn into a frog like isn't it amazing we got like backboned animals that kind of look like monkeys but they have 
complete metamorphosis. This is what the tadpoles look like in real life. They have got these sucker discs and they live in fast flowing beds of rivers. So they just suck and hold on for dear life. And this is a big version from this group. Phantasmarana kurukutensis, basically. They're difficult to collect, it says, because they're easily disturbed and plunge into torrential waters. So they live in like fast flowing rivers and stuff. And you can see how they have this concave depression for the lake to fit in. I don't know. Maybe that's a feature to make them more hydrodynamic. So when they're like crouching down under a fast moving stream, they don't get swept away. I don't know. Just beautiful. And then this finishes it for Hylodiae. No, Hylidae and Hylodidae. This finishes it, everyone, for part four of the CM Cozeman Frog Extravaganza, the gift that keeps on giving. <coughs> <coughs> oh my god. I've been talking non-stop for three days. It's really it's really something like my head clouds over and I feel like I got like sand in between my ears. It's just oh so I hope you enjoyed this part and see you again in part 5. Please remember to subscribe, like and leave a comment and also consider donating to me on Patreon. That was that and see you in the next part of the never end. Oh my god, we're not even halfway through. Fuck. See you in the next part of the CM Cozeman Frog Extravaganza. <laughs>